Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Some people are afraid to feel good in church, you know? We're worshiping God. This should be the most fun we ever have in life. Amen. It's fun. God is good. I really, you know, Independence Day, we would usually speak about freedom and independence, and, and in no way am I, uh, do I want to minimize the holiday, uh, Independence Day here coming up in just a three, three days. Uh, but I really felt the Lord check my spirit as I was preparing the message. And uh, maybe next week I preach on independence, I'm not sure. But I really felt Him speaking to my spirit and just to, to tell you guys that God is still God. You know, no matter what you've been through, no matter what life has brought your way, God is still God. And specifically today, God still heals. God still heals. My goal today is to present this message and, and maybe accomplish two things at once. First off, if maybe you were brought up um, in, a, in a church or not even in a church at all, and you don't believe or don't know that God can heal or does still heal. And when I say God still heals, we're going to talk about physically, spiritually, emotionally, in every way. Our God is a healer. And so I hope to present to you facts from the Word of God to show you that He does still heal. Um, I also, for those of you that know God still heals, I hope that the message today that God would allow me to preach it in a way that it will inspire your faith, that it will stir up the gift of God that is in you so that you will trust in God, that you'll trust in Him to bring healing into your life. We're going to start in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. I put some notes in your bulletins if you want to use them. You can fill in the blanks as we go or you can save those for later, make airplanes, whatever. Just don't do that in here. <laughs> Nobody throw an airplane in here. But I, I put those in there for you. If you'd like to use them, use them. It may help you. If not, that's fine also. God still heals. Exodus 15 and 26. Uh, it's a long verse. Go back and read the rest of it. But we're going to look at the end of it. For it says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. So, is God a healer? Yes. This scripture says God is a healer. And if you read your Bible, you'll find out that God was a healer way back in the first book of the Bible. Remember Sarah, who was 90 years old when she had Isaac. Her womb was barren, and God healed her so that she had Isaac. God is a healer. All throughout the Bible, from the first book to the last book, we see that our God is a healer. So... Look to your neighbor and say, our God is a healer. He is. All right. So, who does God heal? That's the next one. Who does God heal? You. <laughs> you. Now, I know our scripture today is in the King James, and he uses Old English. He says, uh, I am the Lord who healeth thee. We don't say thee anymore. We say you. Some of us in the South say Ewans. I never understood that one, but some of you do. You, that's what that means. So who does God heal? You. God is talking to His people, and He doesn't give any ex exceptions or exclusions. And so as the people of God, we can look to the Bible, to the Word of God, and we can declare, not only is God a healer, but God heals me. Look to your neighbor again and say, God can heal you. All right, now, when does God heal? When does God heal? Let's say now. Now, I am the Lord who healeth thee. Healeth, that's another we don't put ETH on the end of our uh, words anymore. We don't say, I go a runneth. You know, I'm going to go runneth or I like to walketh. We don't say that anymore. That's old English. 
But all it means is it's a present continuous. And so instead of healeth, we put an S on it and say heals. And so because it says, I am the Lord who heals you, that means it's a present continuous. And so this morning when you spoke to the Lord, you were speaking to the Lord who heals you. Today as we worship God, we're worshiping, worshiping the God who heals us. Tomorrow when we wake up and we speak to the Lord, we are praying to God who heals us. That S or the ETH that you're reading in your Bible tells you that God is a healer right now. Are you with me so far? Is God a healer? Yes, He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us. Who does God heal? You. When does God heal? Now. He's a right now God. Say, He's a right now God. All right. I understand. We can't get locked up into this. In God's time, He will heal. I understand that sometimes God does delay. God didn't have to wait till Sarah was 90. But he did. God had a reason. But we can't live our whole life in our condition saying, in God's time, he will do it. I believe as the people of God, we need to have faith and proclaim, I believe my God is a healer right now. And I can have God's healing in my life right now, in my body, in my mind, in my emotions, in the things I'm facing. God can heal me now because he is the Lord who heals me. Amen. All right, we're getting there. Now, the cross of Christ was a cross of healing. Now, I've just shown you God is a healer all throughout the Word. You can't dispute it. Nobody can dispute it. God is a healer. The cross of Christ was a cross of healing. Now, I want to tell you something. It doesn't matter because I know there's a lot of preachers, a lot of preachers that do not preach that God still heals. That doesn't change the fact that God still heals. All right? Doesn't change that fact. The cross of Christ was a cross of healing. Look at Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. This was written several hundred years before Christ came. He was speaking of Christ and his ministry, and it's saying that the cross of Christ would be a cross of healing. Now, there are preachers that say this scripture does not pertain to physical, that it only pertains to spiritual. And let me say this. This scripture does pertain to spiritual, and the most important aspect of our healing is spiritual. The greatest miracle God ever performs is when He saves someone, when He changes someone's life, when He washes their sins away, redeems them, sets them free, gives them eternal life that is greater than any physical healing that God would ever do. And the book of Isaiah is speaking of the spiritual healing that comes from God. But some would say that physical is not included in the scripture. Now, I argue that, and I'm going to argue that with God's word. All right? I'm not going to argue with my opinion. I'm going to take you to Matthew chapter 8 and start in verse 16. Look what Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 says. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command. Now, that's a a spiritual healing right there. And he healed all the sick. Spiritual, physical. And I'm so glad that God included verse 17. Look at it. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah who said, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. Spiritual, yes. Physical, yes. 
It's in our Bible. It's in the Word of God. And it doesn't matter who says he doesn't. God says he still does. And let me say this also. It doesn't matter that there are phonies and that there are fakes and that there are people that get on the TV and they want to sell you holy miracle water from Israel. Just because people do that doesn't mean we're going to step back and say, well, maybe God doesn't heal. Because there's some people out there that are lying and taking advantage of people and just doing something to get money. Listen, the devil has a counterfeit for everything. And the reason he counterfeits that, think about it, because it's so crucial. It's something that God wants to do for us. He wants to bring healing throughout our life. And no wonder the enemy would counterfeit that and cause other ministers to shy away just because there are people who lie and people who deceive. There's been people caught, you know, with earbuds in their ear so they could hear. And the people sign a card when they come in. And that preacher's up there saying, is there, is there a Mary? Is there a Mary Lockridge here? Yeah, I feel it from the Lord. No, you don't feel it from the Lord. Somebody's speaking that into your ear. And because that people's faith are, is diminished, then they say, God doesn't do this. Listen to me. Just because there are people who lie, people who deceive, people who are greedy, just because there are people that says he doesn't, God does. He still does. Because his word says he does. I don't care, I don't care what anybody else or any other, whatever TV channel says yes or nay or how, or you have to send them so much money to receive it. Come on, God. We're smarter than that. We're smarter than that. Somebody says you've got to send them money to receive your promise. Send them some money you can receive your healing. Come on, we're smarter than that. Where is that in the Word of God? But let's not let it tamper with our faith. Because that's exactly what the devil wants to do. It's to tamper with your faith by showing you who is not right. By showing you who is lying to you. Let it, let it cause us to rise up and say, we are the people of God. And God does still heal. But He heals because of His grace. And He heals people who are undeserving like me. He heals people who are broke and can't give a penny. He heals people who, who can't do the things they want to do because of their condition. He heals people who have been through hell on earth. Because He's God and He does it out of mercy, out of grace, and out of love. God still heals. The Father says so, the Holy Spirit says so, the Word says so, Isaiah says it, David says it, Matthew says it, Peter says it, the Bible says it. So we need to say it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Jesus healed people. All right, read your Bible. Jesus healed people. You can't read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John without seeing that Jesus healed people. It's not only in the Bible, it's written in historical accounts of Jesus. He healed people. Healed people. Matthew 12 and 15, let's skim through some of these. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Matthew 14, 36, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Luke 6 and 19, the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Luke 4 and 40, now when the sun was setting, all they, had, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Acts 10 and 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, and God was with, or for God was with him. Jesus healed people. You can't read the Bible without seeing it. Jesus healed people. People that were physically sick, mentally, spiritually, possessed, dead, you name it. He did. We can't argue that. Well, here's something else you can't argue. Jesus hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. The Bible declares in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever's, you know, that's a big word. It's not big in size, but it means a whole lot. It means he's not changing. He still heals. He still desires to heal. He still heals. 
He hasn't changed. Psalms 103, verse 2 and 3. One of my favorite scriptures, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then it's fixing to give some benefits. So we need to decide right now, are these benefits for us still? Or are these benefits just for the people in the Old Covenant? Well, my Bible tells me the New Covenant is better than the Old Covenant. My Bible tells me the blessings of the Old Covenant are not only given to us in the New Covenant, but they're given to us because of grace in the New Covenant. In other words, in the Old Covenant, blessings and cursings came from obedience and disobedience. In the New Covenant, blessings come from the obedience and righteousness of Jesus Christ who died for us. And so these benefits are ours. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forgetting not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Does God still forgive? I hope so, don't you? Who healeth all thy diseases. I found this amazing story of a pastor. He pastored a First Baptist church. And I think it was in 1990, he had a virus that attacked his vocal cords. Just ate them all up. The doctor said he would never be able to speak again. He had to retire from pastoring his church. His name was Duane Miller. You can look it up. If you want to look it up, research it. Duane Miller, 1990. All he could do is just, you, you couldn't even hardly understand what he could speak. I'm going to show you in a minute. So he had to retire from preaching. But he believed that God did still heal. And he taught a Sunday school class. They had a special microphone, and they put it right up to his lips so the people could tell what he was saying because his voice was so messed up. With it really up close to his lips, super sensitive, they could tell what he was saying. Well, one day, he's teaching this class. And you know what scripture he's teaching them? This one right here. You know what happened? The Lord healed him. While he's teaching it. And I thought to myself, I wish I could find the recording of that. And I found it. So I want, I want, you, to, I want you to watch it today. Play that for me, if you will. On the other hand, to say that, since we don't have anything after the book of Acts, that miracles ended at the book of Acts and they never happen again, is equally as wrong. Because you have put God in a box both ways. And he doesn't want to be in the box. So... The psalmist says, I'm excited. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. One of his benefits is he heals all of my diseases. And then in verse 4 he says, and he redeems my life from the pit. Now I like that verse just a whole lot. I have had and you have had in times past pit experiences. <sighs> We've both had... We've all had times when our life seemed to be in a pit, in a grave. And we didn't have an answer for the pit we find ourselves in. And I don't understand this right now. I'm but overwhelmed at the moment. I'm not quite sure what to say or do. <laughs> We'd know what to do, wouldn't we? <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> sounds funny to say at a loss for words. <laughs> I 
Thank you, Lord. I. God still heals. We are the hands of Christ. We are the hands of Christ. Jesus healed. Jesus rose from the dead. He ascended to the Father. But before he ascended, he said this to his followers in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. In the book of James chapter 5, the Bible gives us instructions on how to pray for people who are in need. Listen to it. It says, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. In other words, the person who comes to God in order to receive healing will not only receive healing physically, but also receive healing spiritually, and emotionally, and in their heart, and their mind. Whatever injury they may have. Because some injuries are physical. And some injuries are deeper than that. Praise team, if you want to come help me. We practice what the Bible teaches us. And so, I have some oil and the Bible in the book of James says that we should anoint with oil. There is no power in oil. <laughs> it's just oil. Oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. and It represents the Holy Spirit. And so we anoint with oil and obedience to the Lord. And we trust God. Our carnal mind says, what if God doesn't do it? But the spirit within us says, what if he does? <laughs> what if he desires to and we won't ask him? <laughs> what if he wants to do so much more in our lives and we've chalked it up to it's not his will? He doesn't want to intervene in my life. What if he's looking for a people of faith to say, I believe God's bigger than my circumstance. God can heal me. Ask yourself this question. Where do you need healing? Where do you need healing? Chances are, every single one of us need healing somewhere. Where is it for you? And then ask this question. Is God a healer? Who does He heal? When does He heal? What did his cross mean for me? What has he called us to do? Maybe you're like me, and I, this is sometimes a weakness of mine. Sometimes I feel selfish to ask God for personal healing in my own life when there's so many people around me that have it worse than me. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm being selfish when I ask God to help me to heal me if I know someone that's worse perhaps you have that problem too but God desires to heal you so that you can promote healing in the people around you if you've ever been on an airplane and they give you the little safety speech and they tell you if the cabin loses pressure these things are going to drop down from the ceiling you got to get that mask put it on right or you're going to black out if you don't well they to the parents it's sort of peculiar what they say because I'm a parent and if the cabin loses pressure I'm going to grab that mask and I'm going to put it on my kids 
Do you know what they tell you? They say, don't do that. Do not do that. Because if you're trying to put the mask on your kids and you black out, guess what? Nobody's helping anybody. They say, get the mask. Parents, put it on your face so you can breathe. And then help your kids because then you can help them. See, too many of us, we're still broken. We're still injured. We're still hurting. We haven't come to God for healing. We're not seeking that healing that God wants to bring to our lives. And so, therefore, we can't even help the people around us. We want to help them. We want to lend a helping hand, but we're hurting as much as they are. It's time to know Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Let God, what I'm saying is, I want to give you an excuse today to be selfish and ask God to bring healing into your life. That's what I'm saying today. So I'm going to ask us all to stand. And this is what I'm going to do. I got the praise team to cut worship a little bit short at the beginning so I'd have a few more minutes at the end. It's still 15 minutes till 12. And I want to pray for you. I want to anoint you and pray with you that God would heal you. You may come up here and you have a physical problem or it's in your mind or it's in your emotions. You're hurt emotionally. You're scarred. You're injured. Whatever. We're just simply going to ask God to heal you. Now, I don't know. You may get all funny feeling. You may feel warm. You may feel absolutely nothing. You may take off running or shouting or hit the floor or what. You know what? I'm not worried about any of it. I'm just simply going to ask God to do what His Word said He would do. And we're going to leave the rest with God, okay? And so what I'm going to do is they, they, they go into this song. I just invite you to come. And I'm not going to spend long with each person. But I want to ask God to bring healing into your life. So whatever it is you need healing with, you ain't got to tell me. I'm just going to agree. Just line up across the front. We're going to do this. If, uh, if you're not going to come up or you don't need a specific healing in your life right now, could you do me a favor and just where you are, could you just say a simple prayer as I pray? Say, God, do it for them. Lord, help them. Do it for God. Help them. They're hurting, God. Would you help them? They're hurting, Lord. Would you please help them? Would you do that? Father, we just ask you to heal. We're just simply obeying your word. We're not here for a show. This is not about me. This is not about you. Lord, this is what you said, who you are, what you do. So, God, we just trust you to bring healing into each life that's come forward today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.